Hey guys, OG Albina here, but you guys are NCP Wi-Fi Season 4 Week 1 Battle against Mid Poke Master and his Kentucky Tora Cats. Please go check out Mid in the description below. He's a very good friend of mine, he's a very good player, and I would really appreciate you if you go and showed his side of the battle some love. And of course, if you're new here, this is your first time catching one of our videos, go ahead and hit that sub button. It's really free, it's completely easy, and you can always change your mind later. I'd really appreciate your support going through, and we got a great season ahead of us. I'm really confident in this team, really confident in our play. I'm ready to take home some dubs this week, and hopefully it starts right here with mid. So, um, we are gonna have a quick little team builder. I will leave a, uh, you know, like a little message on screen saying when the battle starts, if you wanna jump into that, there'll be timestamps and stuff like that for that. Um, but we have nice team builder slides that um, our buddy Brody actually ended up commissioning for himself, but I ne never ended up using. So I uh, I paid him for him and I had him, you know, adjust him a little bit for our leagues. And this is going to be the debut of them. So I'm really, really, really excited to, uh, you know, have you guys see this go up. And uh, yeah, it'll be a cool way to kind of, you know, help you visualize our EVs, you know, our moves, our items and all that stuff a little bit better than just looking at in-game. Uh, what do you call it? Mods and stuff like that. So. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the team builder part. Our team, if you haven't caught our draft analysis yet, definitely go do it. But if you haven't seen our draft analysis, it consists of Latios, Excadrill, Scolipede, Jellicent, Sylveon, uh, Moltres, Gigalith, Scrafty, Tangela, Zergatry, and Stoutland. While mid's team is down below, it consists of Victini, Zeraora, Rillaboom, Milotic, Hitmontop, Niligo, Palosand, Bisharp, Tauros, Rabombi, and Snob. I think it starts off the bat. Victini can be very, very annoying, especially your mixed Victini um, can be very, very obnoxious for a team. Like an E ball plus, uh, you know, V create kind of rips through a team. V, uh, e ball, V create, uh, maybe like a Dazzling Gleam and like U turn or something like that. It could be boots, it could be, you know, like Assault Vested, um, it could be extra belt. I don't think a choice variant is going to come versus me in particular, maybe Scarf, if anything. But uh, regardless, it's a pretty big issue for our team. We're going to have to play around it correctly. So uh, that thing is definitely very, very scary. Zero Aura. Terrifying. Um, our ground type isn't the sturdiest thing defensively. So if we take a little bit of chip, honestly, we're in a really, really bad spot. Knock into fighting coverage um, with that electric stab on top of it is very, very tough for us to deal with. So it'll be um, it'll be interesting how we try and get around that. Willaboom, I'm not too, too worried about in all honesty. Um, we have Tangela plus Moltres plus Scolipede to take that thing on. Um, Neelego can be a bit scary because our steel is a little bit more um, offensive. That can obviously be annoying. Milotic, very annoying for us to break, so we're going to have to be careful about that. Same thing with Palisant, and then Bisharp is a big, big offensive threat as well. Steel plus um, uh, dark coverage versus our team is very good, but I think we do have the team to potentially do it. And let's go ahead and jump in with our first member, which is going to be Latios, rocking out with the Culver Berry as its item. Psychic, Shadow Ball, Roost, and Aura Sphere. EVs are on your screen as well. We got 44 HP, 20 defense, 244 attack, 4 speed def, and 196 speed with a timid nature. This Pokemon is a great wall breaker in this game. He doesn't have great responses to it, especially being the fact that Lonnie did get Aura Sphere and his only steel type switching is going to be that Bisharp. His fairy um, obviously doesn't appreciate taking Psychic and we don't even have coverage for that anyways. And then uh, Shadow Ball obviously it's things like Victini and Palosan very, very well. With our investment and our Culber Berry, we can live in Adamant, Life Orb, Knockoff from Bisharp from full, which is awesome. We obviously choose Sucker Punches in that same respect. We have enough speed for Neoligo and then we have the rest of our EVs in Special Attack. Jumping on to the next one, we have Moltres rocking out with the Heavy Duty Boots, Flamethrower, Roost, Scorching Sands, Toxic, oh, Ability Flame Body, totally don't have a place for the ability, but we are rocking out with Flame Body this week. Um, EVs wise, we are rocking out with 140 HP, 84 Defense, 60 Special Attack, 4 Speed Def, and 220 Speed with a Timid Nature. This thing is a great catch-all check to things like a Pendulous Choice Victini. It checks the heck out of a Rillaboom. Does not, uh, you know, care about Rillaboom in the slides. It's a great hit on top check if it doesn't have Stone Edge or Rock Slide, though I do expect it to have it. Um, and it is also a pretty solid Bisharp check as well. It's a great pivot into the Rabombi to where Rabombi can never get scary. Um, Flame Floor plus Scorching Scan hits my entire, uh, my opponent's entire team neutrally or super effectively, which is awesome. Obviously, it's kind of bouncing off Milo, but we do have Toxic to catch that thing on the Switch, which is awesome. EVs wise, we have enough speed for Rillaboom. Um, we have enough special attack to two it KO, zero aura. And if we can catch a burn with that thing, um, with the Scorching Sand, that's obviously awesome. We also two it KO max HP and the illegal with it. We uh, two it KO Victini after Stealth Rock. And then we can live a Jolly Plasma Fist from max HP. Uh, if we are completely at full, we do live a hit from the zero aura, which could come up clutch as well. So 
that's going to be Moltres this week. Just a nice catch-all check to a lot of his physical offense. Next up, we have our Excadrill rocking out with the Choppleberry Sand Rush as its ability. High Horsepower, Iron Head, Rapid Spin, and Silver Stance. 108 HP, 156 Attack, 4 Defense, 4 Spadef, and 236 Speed with a Jolly Nature. Now, my main game plan, and you'll see this in our, believe our next member, um, is going to be get up lots of hazards, chip down my opponent's potential checks to Excadrill being the Hitmon Top, the Milotic, the Palisand, and kind of set up for an endgame with Excadrill. I understand that there's a Rillaboom that can Grassy Glide me there, which is definitely very, very scary, but we do have a whole Moltres, we still have a whole Latios, um, and a bunch of things like that that can potentially take that thing on. We do have a whole Scolipede that would obviously uh, four times resisted as well. So I'm not the most worried about X, uh, the, uh, the Rillaboom. We are high horsepower over Earthquake though, just because of the possibility of terrain, which is annoying. Uh, Rapid Spin to get away hazards on our side of the field, especially if we're gonna be hazard stacking, that's awesome. Obviously it's gonna be tough to spin with Palisand existing, but I feel like we force a lot of chip on Palisand with our team um, and the way we've constructed it. So I feel like that's not the craziest thing in the world for us to deal with. And a lot of our team doesn't even really care about webs as you'll see a little bit later on. Um, so that's obviously really, really nice. And if we get up a plus two up, we have a couple spikes and rocks. We have chip on the uh, Milo and the Palisand especially. This Pokemon is very, very hard for my opponent to deal with. We have a Chopperberry for the Zero Aura. Um, EVs wise, we live a Jolly Choice Banded Grassy Glide from the Rillaboom, which is obviously nice. We have speed for the Rillaboom. Uh, that's what the 236 Jolly is for. And then the rest of our EVs are in attack, which is awesome. So Excadrill is a great potential win con if we can chip down the entirety of my opponent's team. Next up, we have Scolipede. Speaking of spikes, we are rocking out with a heavy duty boots, speed boost is our ability, poison jab, aqua tail, mega horn, and spikes. 60 HP, max attack, 12 defense, and four speed def, and 180 speed with a jolly nature. Now this Pokemon is here to Hazard stack the heck out of my opponent. Um, hip on top can spin them away, which is a little bit scary. But part of me doesn't even expect to spin him on top because Jellicent just hard stops that 100% of the time if we do end up bringing Jellicent. And I have a lot to potentially deal with hip on top offensively, so I would not be surprised to not even see it come. Although it did come in most of my mocks, um, a lot of the time it didn't end up coming just because of the fact that, uh, you know, I do have a lot for it. Um, on my team, which is really, really nice. Stabs plus Aquatil hit my opponent's team pretty, pretty hard, which is obviously really nice. We are Aquatil over Earthquake uh, to still hit the Neoligo and the Victini, especially while terrain is up. And it gives me a nice, super effective move to hit Palisand, though it doesn't really do too much in a, you know, last ditch scenario if we really need to get, you know, 35% off and it's chipped down. Aquatil could be super, super clutch for us. So I think Sculpey is going to be really nice and being a nice soft check to Rillaboom. Um, unless it's like the, you know, scary acro set and it's like sub bulk up acro, that could be scary. But um, other than that, I think that Scolipede is pretty, pretty solid in this game. And just getting up spikes, checking the Rillaboom and being a solid revenge killer and all that stuff as well. Then for our fifth Pokemon, we have Gigalith. We have our Sand rocking out with the leftovers. Sandstream is its ability to Rock Blast, Stealth Rock, Body Press, and Toxic, 228 HP, 68 Attack, 116 Defense, 92 Super Def, and 4 Speed with an impish nature uh, i believe Impish is the right one i'm completely dumb if i'm uh, i always mix up ambition bold for some reason pretty sure it's impish though bold is my nice attack um but this is gonna be our sand center this is gonna be our rocker this is gonna be one of our main pivots into zero aura and victini toxic is amazing in this game because there's three pokemon on my opponent's team that really do easily switch into gigalith and all of them i want a toxic on being palisand Hitmontop and Milo. If I can get a Toxic on those Pokemon, I'm in a phenomenal spot. Body Press gives me a way to pretty much Oko Bisharp, which is awesome and do a lot of damage to a good majority of his team. Rock Blast is great stab. It deals with the lead Rabombi. Um, it helps me with Victini, obviously, and stuff like that. It hits her Aura hard. Um, it hits the Neolegal hard as well. So, uh, you know, a nice spammable uh, stab outside of, you know, those three aforementioned Mon. But again, if I get Toxic off on those things, I'm in a much better spot for my drill end game. So I'll definitely take that. And yeah, that's going to be a uh, Gigalith's main goal. Get up rocks, get up, throw a few Toxics, be a nice bulky pivot, and just really annoy my opponent's team. Hopefully uh, getting up rocks to stay as well. And then lastly, we have Zerkatry rocking out with the Assault Vest Beast Boost as its ability. Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Energy Ball, and Dazzling Game. 116 HP, 220 Special Attack, and 172 Speed with a modest nature. Now Zerkatry is a very interesting mod in this game. Um, I didn't think setup was very good. Um, I wanted AV, and while you may think like there isn't anything that AV in particular like you know is needed for, it's a great blanket item. Um, it allows me to not get two at KO by scorching sands power, uh, uh, scorching sands from Palisand before rocks, which I think is really nice because this is going to be a main lure to that thing. It allows me to pivot in on Skulls a lot nicer to Milotic because if you look at Milotic and you look at our team outside of hazards and just like overall pressuring it to come in, we don't have a lot of ways to like inherently just break through that Pokemon. 
So I figured having something like Zergachi would be really, really, really beneficial. And uh, it's just an overall nuisance for my opponent to switch into. If I get 50-50s right, um, Dazzling Gleam and Energy Ball chunk the hell out of Zeraora. And Zeraora is not going to Oko me back, especially if it's trying to hit me with close combat or something like that. Energy Ball and Energy Ball will kill that thing. And especially if Terrain's up, that's going to do a lot of damage. So I will definitely, definitely take that. Um, Volt Switch and Thunderbolt are pretty free, like I said, outside of the Zeraora and the Palisand. And if I can force that Palisand to come in and take an Energy Ball... I'm chilling. I'm doing very, very okay. So I'm very okay with that. It just gives me a nice sponge to a lot of your special things and uh, a nice potential wall breaker um, to break through that Milo and Palisand, which can give my team a decent amount of trouble otherwise. But yeah, that's going to be a team. Be right back with the battle. All right, guys, here we are with the battle. We are connected with mid. Uh, let's see what he ended up bringing. I have my notes pulled up. I have my calcs ready. Should be good to go. All right. I'm assuming he's doing his intro. I don't know if mid does team builders before, so he might have like totally jumped the gun. Um, but we do our team builders, oopsie, way beforehand. Okay. So he has Rilla, Zara, Nihi. Oh, no, him on top. That's amazing. I'm going to spike stack the shit out you, bro. Nihi. Um, then we have, what do you call it? Fish Sharp. Hello, and Milo. Uh, right off the bat, I think I'm going to lead off with my Zerkatry. Um, the only thing it leads super, super poorly against is potentially like a Rillaboom or potentially um, the Zero Aura because I don't do it, KO it uh, without the train boost and stuff like that. Uh, but other than that, I, uh, I lead very well versus this team. So I'm not super, super upset. If he leads Palisand to get up early rocks, Phenomenal. I'm an earth power. I'm a I'm an energy ball the shit out of that thing. So uh sick. I'll put me in a good position for Lee Milo as well. I'll probably throw off a lead, I'll probably throw off an energy ball versus the Milo. Just because it covers like literally most pivots. Again, Rillaboom can switch in, that's fine. I got a Moltres. So I'm not super worried about that. Um I wish I was sub Moltres, uh, but I just felt like I couldn't fit it in this week in particular. It is going to be a Rillaboom lead. That's fine. The Alcon's <laughs> big Zerk tree. Um, I think we have a very, 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 very free Moltres here. No matter what he does, he risks a flame body. So uh, unless he wants to make the double, um, I'm completely fine with this. So we are just going to go hard into our friend uh, Moltres. Are we in a good spot from there? There's no Victini as well, which is really, really nice. Uh, I, I didn't have much for Victini on this team in particular that I built. Like, I, I see why he didn't bring it. Um, but the team that I brought, very, very weak to Tini. So we're going to go hard, uh, hard Moltres. Knock off. No! Flame body. Unfortunate. Now, what do I want to double in? I, I could just throw for Toxic, but the Nihi play is very, very likely as well. Like, it's very tough for me to justify going for that. I could go for a Scorching Sands to cover that knee illegal play. I really do think that his most likely pivot is going to be Milo off rip, and I would love to Toxic that thing. Hmm. That's really tough. What puts me in the worst position overall? I think... I think, for, I, think I throw off a Toxic. I can go uh, Giga hard on the Nihi pretty freely. And, uh, you know, I'd love to get a Toxic off on Palisand. That's fine as well. I'm completely here for that. So, I am going to get a big Toxic off on this thing. Um, the only issue is, now I don't have my boots, so rocks are going to be an issue. But provided I stay somewhat healthy, I should be completely fine versus that Rillaboom. And I'm boots on my um, Scolipede. Uh, and my x girl obviously doesn't care. And I do have the option to spin later. Now, part of me, part of me really just wants to roost. I'm trying to stay healthy. I expect him to get up his rocks here. Um, and it covers him being rock slide. I don't think he'll uh, raw scorching sense or earth power me right off rip. If he wants to talk to me, then fine. Fit out the turn after. This at least gets me up to full. He's going to get up his rocks. It's, again, completely fine with me. And chipping this thing down is, like, paramount to my team. Like, very important for me. Hmm. 
Hmm. Now, part of me really wants to offer scores and chance, expecting the Nihi pivot. So, I don't know if I will. Hmm. Because I don't have great switchings to this thing. I really don't have great switchings. I suppose I could just off a flamethrower off rip. Yeah. So, he's going to switch. I'm assuming into the Nihi, so I wish I would have pulled the trigger. Yeah. I wish I would have pulled the trigger, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, and he's going to come out. I can go hard into Mr. Uh, Gigalith. That does literally nothing. Burn? No. Now, let's see. It is going to not be Black Sludge, so it could be a potential Scarf variant. Um, I think my play is definitely hard into Gigalith. I don't have great pivots otherwise, um, and I figure that covers a lot. He goes for a T-Spike. That's interesting. I do have a Scolipede, so I'm not super worried about that. Um, though I don't, if I'm holding, if I'm boots, do I absorb the T-Spike? But T-Spike wouldn't even be that good versus me. Who knows? Ah, uh, a Grass Knot actually could be very scary right here. Here we go. So, level 50. What's this Grass Knot do? This could be scary. So he's going to Power Gem. In the Harain. So we're going to get a bunch of recovery back. And part of me really wants to pivot out and scout for that grass knot. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Because I really do want rocks in this game. I think rocks are really important. And I obviously want my sand too. So I feel like scouting for that is at least somewhat important. Grass knot has a chance to knock me out from here. It is a roll, but I would rather not. And it covers him switching as well into his palo sand. That's completely fine with me. I think I'm just going to throw off a shadow ball. So we are going to be uh, forced out into Rigladios on the Hallow Sand. Shadow Ball is going to do how much to this thing? Not enough to kill, but Shadow Ball also isn't doing very much to me in return. I can chew it pretty easily. So I'm going to sell off a Shadow Ball. I think it's relatively free in this situation. Um, if I was a boosting item, we could have killed him. Like, if we were, like, specs or something, but... Regardless, his damage is great. I can spin later on now. Uh, so he is gonna Shadow Ball. Completely fine. So we're gonna get a Spadef drop. That's fine. Uh, Sandstorm is going to buff it. Again, not the biggest deal in the world. Um... Unfortunately, Latios is going to take a lot of chip right here. And we can't really recover stall this thing. So I think I could just off a Psychic here on a nice middle ground on him wanting to save this. But yeah, that's completely fair. But we're going to be able to spin pretty freely now, which is very nice. Um, and our Excadrill endgame looks much, much nicer. The only issue is it's going to be very hard for us to get up our hazards at this point in the game. So I'm assuming Bishop's going to come out here. And does could put us kind of in a 50-50. Um, whether or not he clicks Sucker or Knock. Oh, he's going to go Rillaboom. Okay, that's fine. Um, I think what I want to do... Is I can save this because I can either spin later... Or not be in the worst spot um, if we can spin. This thing still is pretty good offensively. We do live one, wait, no, we're at 19, not 29. So we do die to rocks here, but if we can find the opportunity to get up our, um, get off our rapid spin, completely fine with me. So I'm going to make the skull peep play. I don't know if you knock here. I figure a U-turn's coming out. Grassy glide. That's fine. I'm going to start getting up spikes. I am going to start getting up spikes. We're going to start boosting up, which is awesome. So we're going to have a spike here. Uh, there is no removal on Mr. Mid Pokemasters team, I believe. Nope, there is not. So these spikes are going to be phenomenal. Unless he's boots Zera, I'll 100% take this. So. Let's see what we can do. 
I'm gonna put a spike right here. So there goes one. One nice layer. Is he going to be flame orb? I don't think he is, based on him not clicking that. Oh, he is. Okay, so it just pops after. Now, do I want to get up another spike here, or do I want to save this thing? Part of me expects a flip turn. I think I am just going to get up another spike. So again, I can spin with my drill later. So like, I, I still have my uh, Moltres, so he is going to stay in. Just need to Scald. Okay, well, let's, play for, let's pray for no burn. Ah, uh, that was my risk that I took, though. That's on me, then. That's 100% on me. It's whatever. I'll get up my third layer at the very least, and I can save this as, like, a pivot. So, we'll get up all three layers at the very least. So, our speed is going to boost one more time, and then we're going to just, uh, what do you call it? Go off a big spike. It's fine. We get up all three layers, and again, there's no removal on his team. Uh, we do need to be careful about this thing. It could be very scary for us to deal with. Um, do we live one more? No, I think we die to burn. I think we die to burn. No, we don't. Yeah, that's cool. I'm here for it. I am here for it. So, awesome. Now, what's going to come out here is what I'm assuming... I mean, regardless, I guess I can just throw off a Mega Horn for the most damage possible on things that might want to come in. So we're going to use Mega Horn. Skullpeed is going to go down, but we got up all three layers. Obviously, that's literally negligible damage, um, but he is chipped, and that's something I'll take. So my question, do I go into... Grass is going to disappear from the battlefield. Oh, God, it's fine. And I think from here we go right into Zergatry. Sorry, I was just getting a text message. I feel as if right here, can't throw off an energy ball. Um, it covers this thing staying in for some reason. Which I'll take. Uh, it'll do a chip to the Rillaboom. Three spikes plus terrain boost energy ball is going to do a lot of damage. Like, for sure. Um, and it covers this arrow pivot on the electric move. So it is going to be a Rillaboom switch. Again, that's fine. Three spikes is, is going to be great. The grassy Surge is going to pop. I do, I do need to find an opportunity to get up my, um... Uh, what do you call it? My rocks. But it's fine. Earth off an energy ball. This is going to be terrain boosted. Now, I don't know if I want to take this damage. Because the Milo is a little bit annoying, but it's burned. So I could stay in and gleam here. I think I want to stay in and gleam here. I mean, it covers him making the U-turn play. So he is slower than us. He's a very slow Rillaboom. Is it going to be enough? It is not. So he's going to U-turn, so he's, died, he's dead to Spike. Which is very, very nice for us. Like, incredibly nice for us. So what is that going to force in? What is that going to force in? I'm assuming... Probably... Okay, so Nihi, that's fine as well. That's three Spikes. And again, we are Assault Vest, so we'll live this hit. Part of me wants to get the pivot out with my Volt. It covers him making a really aggressive play, and it gives me a free um, free drill. So I'm going to Volt. Should live anyone a hit from this thing into rocks pretty easily. So that's the play I'm going to make. He's going to Grass Knot, expecting the thing. How much is this going to do to us? Where are you Still did so much. Good lord. Uh, but we'll live rocks. Nice and free switch out. And I think what that's going to allow me to do is get off a rapid spin. So 
What's up, buddy? Okay, give me one second. I'm in a battle. Sorry, guys. So we're going to have our HP restored. Um, we are not the, you know, bulkiest thing in the world, but let's go ahead and get off this rapid spin. That means Moltres does not have to deal with the rocks anymore. And we have a much more um, reliable mod in there in that sense, which is honestly amazing. Um, out comes Rillaboom. Ah, oh, so we don't get our spin off. Actually, it's a smart play by mid. Maybe we should have Swords Dance. Maybe we should have Swords Dance. That is unfortunate, actually. Goodness gracious. Okay. Okay, okay. How do we want to deal with this? If he goes Zera to close combat, we are Chopel. If he goes into Milo, I don't think we kill. He is going to go Zera. I'm spinning. Oh, he's air balloon. That's fine. I'm going to spin. I'm Chopel. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to spin and chopple. And we'll be able to claim a KO here. So that's fine. Again, we are chopple. We'll chew this very easily. It's cool that he floats above the spikes. And that did so much damage. Um, again, not too worried. We'll be able to get off a spin. It does a lot of damage to the Zera. It is not as big of an issue at this point now. Which is very important. So the grass terrain is gone. And now from here, I'm going to throw off a high horsepower. Uh, with the three spikes up, high horsepower should to it KO the Milo. Should to it KO the Milo. And again, if we can keep sand up, uh, we do have a good shot against that um, Bisharp in the back. Uh, that plus Moltres should be able to help us out. Um, unless it's Scarf Stone Edge, uh, we are faster than Max Speed Bisharp, like, for sure. So, let's see what we can do. He's going to withdraw. I wanted to Swords Dance, like, on some man shit, but... So, he's going to sack Nihi. Again, I'm, I'm completely fine with that. So, Shiny Animations are going to pop. And we can still save this because of the fact that... If we get up sand, it outspeeds the um, my guy still. So that's obviously great. That's obviously great. If he goes into the bishop, though, I may have to attack it. <sighs> He's gonna go the bishop. How am I throwing if I make this play and switch out? Three spikes, two a. Sucker Punch does knock us out from this range. High Horsepower knocks him out as well. This plus two Adamant Life Orb kill Moltres. Sucker Punch does not. Would he make that play? I really think I need this thing, too. Like, I really think I need it. I'm gonna go Moltres. If he makes a Stone Edge play or if he makes a Sword Stance play, great on mid. Great on mid. Sucker Punch. Okay, that's fucking great. That's phenomenal. Okay. So I'm gonna Flamethrower. We should be fast in this thing. We should be in a decent spot. So he's gonna Withdraw. Fine. We need to keep our thing healthy and around. So this flamethrower is going to go out. I don't know if this will be enough to do it KO this plus Sands, and Sands can miss. No, definitely not. Um, so this does force him into a recover turn. And it's fine. I'm going to make the aggressive play out into my Zergatry. I have no use for it other than checking this. And if he attacks me, then fine. Um, he'll go down the next turn. Again, and that's that's completely fine with me. So is he going to Scald? He's going to recover. Again, completely fine. I throw off an Energy Ball here because it catches the Zera. Uh, if he goes into Bisharp, oh well. You know, I'm not, I'm not super worried about that. 
I'm not super worried about that. So I'm going to throw off an energy ball. Again, it catches him going into uh, the Zera. He can make the aggressive Bisharp play, but because of the fact that I have three spikes up, I don't know if that even really, like, you know, helps him out a ton. So. We're going to go for E-Ball. Should knock out the Zera from this range. Unless I'm absolutely out of my mind. So he's going to switch. He realizes he kind of needs that thing. He is going to make the aggressive Bisharp play. Again, that's three spikes. Plus this, and he has to make the play of, um, don't get the drop. Don't get the drop. I'm going to Gleam, because it'll kill this thing, and it covers him making a zero pivot for some reason. And this thing cannot switch in and out. If he tries to Swords Dance, I will knock him out. Guaranteed. He is not going to Sucker Punch me. Zergatry is going to pick up a KO there, which is awesome. Absolutely amazing. Gotta get our boosh boost. And if he goes into Zera, now when he goes into Zera, I think I'm gonna sack off my Gigalith. Yeah, so he's gonna take three spikes. And again, that's completely fine with me. I'm gonna sack off my Gigalith. <sighs> because I just need to get up my sand. That is it. Just need to get up my sand. So let's sack off. Uh, let's sack off Gigalith. This into close combat will obviously knock us out, but again, that's completely fine with me. He is going to close combat. That's completely fair. Actually, doesn't knock us out, which is really funny. Huh, Gigalith, the beast. I do live a jolly Plasma Fist from full with my Moltres. It's just something to keep in mind. But I am just going to Body Press because it always hits. If he wants to attack me, that's fine. He is going to just attack me. Once again, completely fine. Zero Aura. I don't want to miss, so I want to count something. If he's max HP, but he is at minus... Two. My extra drill. I almost went to the wrong mon. Max HP does die to Iron Head. Though I think I might need a high horsepower. What do I have in the back for Zera if I don't kill it right here? Absolutely nothing. I have her power. I think you should try and make the play on my choke and go into go into Milo. But and I don't think Iron Head and High Horsepower will kill Milo. So he's gonna stay in. I'm gonna hit, thankfully. Thank God. Um we're gonna be able to knock out the uh the Zera Aura. I don't think that crit mattered, thankfully. Down goes Zera. And all that's left is going to be my Lodic. Which again, fine. I think Zergatry should be able to kill it. Even if Excadrill cannot. Especially with the spikes, plus me just peppering this thing with high horsepower, yeah. And I don't think he died to spikes uh, with his era. I don't think he did. And he also and killed everything on my team from that point onwards. So Excadrill is going to click high horsepower. Probably go down to a Scald, if I had to assume. I was going to come out. We're going to hit again. We do literally nothing. He is going to recover. Um, my play is just to keep hitting this thing with high horsepower. Guaranteed put it in a range of a uh, Thunderbolt. Way too early in the season to start playing for differential. <laughs> um, yeah, like I could Swords Dance on some Flex shit. I guess I can Swords Dance on this turn, because like, why not? Um, if he kills me, he kills me. He's in range of Thunderbolt. If he doesn't, then I guarantee get a bunch of chip off on him like each turn. If he scalds me, then I win with Zerg. So... Might as well. So he's gonna recover. Yeah. I mean, like, if, if I got that play wrong, I don't think it mattered in the grand scheme of things, so I'm not too uh too worried. And so I'm subsided. And again, I, I have enough pieces to where Thunderbolt into Psychic from Lottie will kill. Um and obviously saving that is super clutch for us at this point. So I am going to click I horse power. 
gonna miss that one. <laughs> That's fine though. <laughs> That's fine. Um, and we wouldn't have killed anyways. It might cost us a diff point if Zerkatry can't kill this thing. Wait, or if we're slower. If he's like really fast, Milo. Shit, dude. Wait a minute. Uh, we might lose. I might have thrown the whole game. Holy shit, Owen. I did not think that through. Wow. Um, I'm terrified now. I'm going to Thunderbolt. If he kept the max speed Zerk. Oh, God. He didn't. I, I didn't even think about Milo's natural speed tier. So, oh, we're going to lose a little bit of diff. Oh, Zerk's going to chew anyways. Thank God. And we didn't get burned. <laughs> I didn't think, like... I, again, I don't think he's going to be max speed Milo. But if he is, I could have put myself in a really shitty position. But regardless, we're going to beat Jesse. I believe that was a 3-0. Very GG to him. Um, like I said in the team builder game plan was get up spikes, chip down his team to where extra drill could really go crazy and go ham on him. And that's what ended up happening. But again, GG to mid, definitely go check him out in the description below. He's a really good buddy of mine. He makes great content. He's a phenomenal dude. So go check him out. Drop a like on this video if you haven't done so already. Sub if you're new, and I will see you guys next week. Later.